Hello, hello. So today we're going to learn all about atmospheric pressure and how it relates to flying. Don't worry, there's not going to be a physics test or anything, so uh, don't worry about it. I'm going to do my best to keep it nice and simple as usual. So what is atmospheric pressure? Basically, the air on Earth has weight. Earth's atmosphere is pushing down on the surface and everything in it. Land, people, vehicles, everything. This force is known as atmospheric pressure. Now there are times when you have high pressure where there is more force pushing on you and low pressure when there is less force. There are three main factors which affect how much pressure there is. These are the temperature of the air, the humidity or moisture in the air and also your elevation or altitude on the planet. More often than not you'll find that changes in the weather will bring changes in air pressure. Air pressure is measured using a barometer and there are actually two units used to measure air pressure. If you think of temperature for a moment, this is typically measured in degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. The two units used to measure air pressure in aviation are millibars and inches of mercury. What is important to know is that very clever people in the past managed to work out something called a standard atmosphere pressure. Think of this as a baseline for air pressure measurements. So one standard atmosphere is equal to 1013.25 millibars or 29.92 inches of mercury. No need to worry about how these numbers came about because it's kind of complicated. So why are there two different numbers? Well in the past different countries have used both units of measurement for air pressure. In current times the majority of the world use millibars, however the USA and Canada still use inches of mercury as their air pressure measurements. So obviously, depending on where you fly, you may need to know both units. Now we know how air pressure is measured, let's look at how we use these measurements when flying in FSX. So we're going to concentrate on the altimeter that we all know and love. This more specifically is called a sensitive altimeter. What a sensitive altimeter allows you to do is adjust the instrument so you can get an accurate altitude reading when the air pressure changes outside the plane. You can do that by rotating the knob on the instrument and you can read what it's set to in this little window here which rotates as you twist the knob. Unfortunately the default Cessna isn't really that clear so I'm going to jump into the A2A Cessna so you can clearly see what's happening. So here we are in the A2A Cessna 172 and you can see that the altimeter is a bit clearer here. Over on our uh, barometric pressure window you can see that this is being measured in millibars. So you've got 1010 there and then each mark represents one unit. So that would be 1011, 12, 13, 14, 15. At the moment you can see that we've got the, uh, the pressure set to 1013 or the standard atmosphere. And then obviously you just rotate the knob as you need to to adjust it. There's two terms that you will come across when flying. These are QFE and QNH. These relate to the air pressure for field elevation, which measures your height relative to a nearby airport, and nautical height, which measures your height to mean sea level. Normally, you'll be given the air pressure reading by air traffic control, but you can figure out the air pressure very quickly yourself if you're sat on the ground. So if you're going to fly close to the airport to do circuit training for example, you'll probably want to set the altimeter to QFE. To do this, simply rotate the knob until the altimeter reads zero. And that's it set. Easy, huh? So in this case, the QFE is 1009 millibars, roughly. If you want to convert it to inches, or vice versa, convert inches into millibars, you can find the converter on an E6B calculator. I like to use this online one at CSG Network. I'm not affiliated with the website by the way, I just think it's a great tool that's freely available. If you're going to travel far or going to fly higher, you'd need to use QNH. You can find out the QNH by setting the altimeter to match the airport's elevation. And you can find this in the map screen. So here at Inverness, the airport is 31 feet above mean sea level. So set the altimeter to match that. 
So there you have the QNH dialed in. So in this example, the QNH is 1010 again, roughly. Alternatively, you can shortcut this process. If you press B on your keyboard, B for Bravo, like so, the computer will automatically set the altimeter to the current QNH. Now there's one extra thing to know. QFE and QNH are usually local or regional settings. They're used over a relatively small area of land. If you're flying long distances, the chances are you'll need to climb high to cruise along. So once you get above a certain altitude, you need to revert your altimeter back to the standard atmosphere setting, which ensures that all planes high up are flying using the same altimeter settings. This happens above something called the transition altitude, which is a predetermined height where you can change your altimeter setting. This is different across many countries or regions, so it may be worth looking up the transition altitude wherever you are. Another difference is that aircraft start to use flight levels instead of altitude once they get above the transition altitude. Let me explain. Let's say that Scotland has a transition altitude of 5,000 feet. If we were flying at 4,000 feet, we would talk in terms of flying at 4,000 feet. If we were flying at 7,000 feet, we would say that we are flying at flight level 070. So basically, the flight level is your height with the last two numbers removed. So a couple of examples. 5,000 feet would equal flight level 050. 10,000 feet would equal flight level 100. And 22,500 feet would equal flight level 225. Let's jump into FSX and see how we use atmospheric pressure live. So first things first, you can actually choose which unit of measurement you'd like to use. If you go into settings and then click on general, down in the bottom corner you can choose which units you'd like to use. You have the US system, which measures altitude in feet and air pressure in inches, a hybrid system and also a metric system. I use the hybrid system as I mainly fly in the UK. Now, back in the plane, I'm currently sat at Aberdeen Airport for a change because it has this very useful feature, an automated weather report called ATIS that we can listen to on the radio. This weather report will give us the current air pressure reading, so let's listen in. So there you heard the report giving us various bits of information such as wind speed and direction, cloud coverage and temperature. The number we're interested in, and hopefully you caught it, was the QNH number, which in this case was 989. So what we're going to do just now is dial altimeter. Okay, so that's 989 there. Now, of course, we could have used the trick from before, however, if we were flying and we listened to that report, that allows us to change the instrument while we're in the air. So at the moment, the altimeter is reading 210 feet. So let me change the weather quickly and we'll see how that changes the altimeter. Okay, so you can see that I've changed the weather to a more foggy sort of situation. And if we have a look down at the altimeter, you can see that the altitude has actually changed. Now, interestingly enough, it's actually gone below zero. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to dial it up to the QNH using the trick that I, that I talked about before. So I know that the airport elevation is 210 feet. So I'm going to change the QNH up to that. I don't know if we Okay, so that gives us a Q&H reading of 1010 or 1011. So let's listen to ATIS report again and see how close that is.
Okay, so there you go. That's an example of atmospheric pressure and how it affects, sorry, the altimeter. Okay, so hopefully all of that made sense. Um, this was one of those subjects which, again, I had some trouble finding the right words and examples to make it easy to understand, but um, hopefully I did okay. In the next video, I'm going to take a step back from flying and talk about tweaking FSX to get the simulator running the best it can on a computer. Hope to see you there, many thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.